2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 5 says this, And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they called to him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet and the king said unto him where is he and Ziba said unto the king behold he is in the house of Micar, the son of Amiel in Lodibar then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Micar, the son of Amiel from Lodibar just for a few moments on this first Sunday of the month of December 2000 and 25, I, 24, I want to share with you, amen, a subject entitled From Lodibar to the King's Table. From Lodibar to the King's Table. You might be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord. From Lodibar to the king's table. I don't have time to tell you the whole story and I don't have time to tell you all of my history but I just need you to understand the fact that I'm at the king's table means that I've been through something and I may not tell you every day what I've had to go through but I need you to understand that, that it was the grace of God that brought me where I am and I'm not here because of my looks. I'm not here because of who I am. I'm not here because I've done everything right but I'm here here because of the grace of God. This text this morning, very familiar passage. I must have preached this, amen, uh, at least uh, 50 times in my uh, preaching ministry, but it gets new every time that I uh, am able to approach it because this is a story of grace and mercy. This is a story of kindness. Everybody say kindness. Uh, one of the things that I think we have missed in the house of God that we've lost is the ability to be kind to one another. Amen. I'm just going to talk a few seconds this morning. We've forgotten how to be kind. We've forgotten how to consider those uh, that are less fortunate than we are. Uh, and especially in this season of the year, uh, this is the time when we will go out and we will make purchases and we will buy and we will uh, celebrate, amen. But we will oftentimes forget to just be kind to one another, amen. I want to tell you a secret that you might not know, amen. You're going to get a better return from just being nice to one another than being mean. You can buy a $1,000 worth of gifts, but if you're mean and hateful, you ain't going to get nothing in return. I'm talking good all by myself, amen. Until we learn how to be kind, until we learn how to consider. I said it the other morning in prayer. Our, our, our desire should be, Lord, help me to prefer one another. Help me to prefer someone's feelings over mine. Help me to prefer. Why? Because when we learn how to prefer one another, we're careful about what we say to one another. When we learn how to prefer one another, we're careful how we think about one another. When we prefer one another, we're all always trying to figure out a way that we're able to do something for somebody. When's the last time you just thought about doing something nice for somebody? Hallelujah. I'm not talking about going out and buying a bishop. I don't have no money. You know, it's tight. Do you not know, amen, it is, it is more better to just give someone a nice look? Y'all ain't helping me. Oh, Lord. I don't want to talk. I don't want to go this way this morning. Sometimes y'all look is just frustrating. Sometimes y'all look is mean. You just look hateful, just look mean, just look ugly. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Every now and then, you ought to fix a smile on your face. Amen. See how long it took y'all? Y'all looking at me like I'm talking Chinese because some of y'all got your faces all broken up and all angry and mad at what? And God has given you life. Oh, I wish I had help. 
God has blessed you. And even though, I'm going to say something to somebody now, even though the enemy has been attacking you, and even though the enemy has been fighting you, you still ought to be able to have a smile on your face when you get here because this is the safety zone. Y'all ain't here. I don't care what he does to you out there. I don't care what he does to you at your house. When you make it to the house of God, you have made it to the safety zone. And the devil can't do nothing. Y'all ain't, I wish I had help here. I'm going to talk to you, but I feel something on my back already. When you make it to the house of God, that is your time of safety. That's the time, amen, when the devil has to back up all, it ought to be the place, amen, where the devil backs up off of you and says, I can't get you right now. Oh, yeah. I wish I had somebody that, that remember growing up in school, growing up when you were young, you talk all the junk you can and they would run after you and chase after you and, and, and chase you from home all the way home running down the street. But if you could ever get to your porch, y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Get to your porch, you can look back at them and stick your tongue out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ain't thinking about the fact that you got to see them tomorrow for school. But the fact that I made it to my porch says to me, I know you might be bad at the school, but you better not come up on this porch. I, I know, let, me, let me get off from here. Hallelujah. One thing about it, I can celebrate the fact that out of all that I've been through, when I make it to the house of God, I have made it to the safety place. I've made it to the place where I can stick my tongue out at the devil and say, you lost again. Y'all ain't helping me. Hallelujah. You tried it this week. You tried it this year. You tried it this month, but I'm grateful. Hallelujah. That God kept me one more time. If you're glad God kept you, can you clap your hands and say, he kept me. I know he kept me. I know he kept me. Lodi Bar, uh, uh, Lodi Bar in this text, uh, the scripture tells us that David uh, has become king. One of uh, the first things that David does is when he becomes king, he desires to remember uh, those that were a blessing to him. If you understand this text and recognize at this time, uh, Saul and Jonathan are killed after this, uh, after the war, after the uh, David. Ha- after uh, Saul had killed himself and those that were with Saul uh, had uh, destroyed themselves and had been destroyed, Jonathan is gone, his friend is gone, and he sits in a place of authority and power and he asks the question, is there anybody left of the house of Saul? Hallelujah. He didn't say of the house of Jonathan. Isn't that something? I want to just say this for a second. He didn't say, is there anybody left of the house of Jonathan because he loved Jonathan. He says, is there anybody left of the house of Saul? Saul was his enemy. Y'all ain't helping me. Hallelujah. And he says, is there anybody left of the house? Because even though Saul became, or even though I became Saul's enemy, not because I desired to be, because he allowed himself to have an ought against me, it still doesn't change the fact that I still want to be a blessing to the house of Saul. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, you got to learn how to be a blessing to your enemies. Hallelujah. You, you, you may not be able to go there. You may not be able to see them. You may not be able to talk to them. Y'all ain't helping me. Hallelujah. But I just want to remember, <clears throat> is there anybody that's left? Is there anybody that is still alive? Because I want, to lear- I want to be able to be a blessing to those that had a part in me getting to where I am and how I how I'm able to make it to where I am even now. David finds out that there is a son of Jonathan that is in a place called Lodibar. Let me very quickly share with you that Lodibar uh, simply was a desolate and barren place. It was a place uh, in Hebrew, it means the place of no pasture. It is a place where there is nothing that grows. Lodibar is the place uh, where uh, there is no 
pretty flowers. There is no landscaping. Um, there is no uh, pretty grass that is growing and, and pretty buildings and skyscrapers. Lodibar is a barren place. It is a place uh, that represents seasons of our lives that are filled with emptiness and hopelessness. It represents, Lodibar represents the place in our lives where it seems to be that we have been forgotten. It is the place of isolation. It is the place where you learn how to live on your own and you learn how to live with no frills. Y'all ain't helping me. Some of y'all are wonderful because you can live home in your house and don't come out until the morning. Amen. It got pitch black in Lakeview. There was there was no there was no light uh, in it at nighttime because it was a forgotten place. It is in this that Lakeview became a place of Lodi Bar. But I want to tell you something uh, about places that are barren and places that are outcast and places that are forgotten. It is in these places, hallelujah, that make real people. I don't hear nobody here. Hallelujah. It is in these places of obscurity that you find out who God really is. Uh, Deacon uh, Campbell knows about uh, Lakeview, knows about the South like that. There are things, and I don't, I, I don't want to hit, I don't want to offend y'all. Please don't be offended by what I'm going to say. Amen. I just feel like people from the South are better. Amen. Ooh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. People from the South are just a little bit better. Hallelujah. We we know how to live. We, we know how to make it. We never go hungry. I don't hear nobody. Hallelujah. We never talk about I'm hungry and I can't find nothing to eat. I ain't bothering nobody. Somebody in my house loves to talk about I'm hungry and ain't nothing to eat. And I'm confused because I look in the refrigerator and it's food. I look in the cabinets and it's food. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Us being hungry didn't mean going to Chick-fil-A. Us being hungry didn't mean going to Applebee's. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Us being hungry meant getting some rice and some llama beans. Where y'all at? Y'all ain't saying nothing here. We could make a meal out of anything. Uh, we learn how y'all ain't saying, and our butter, y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Our butter was real good and fresh. It had, our, our milk had uh, healing properties to it. Uh, everything was fresh off the yard and it was from the yard to the table and we didn't have cancers. I don't hear nobody here. We, we, didn't, we didn't have all of this stuff. We lived off of hog malls and chitlins and collard greens. Y'all ain't saying that. Those of y'all that could ate okra. Y'all. And all of that stuff from the country kept your body. Y'all ain't helping me here. Hallelujah. Them, them okra and greens and corn. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all up here y'all got corn. We didn't have corn. We had corn. And, and all that stuff worked in our bodies and kept us healed and kept us well. We didn't have a whole lot of high blood pressure and hypertension in the country. But when you get up here and all of this city slicker living, uh, all of this stuff starts working on you. Start getting you caught up. Start getting you uh, uh, agitated. The hustle and the bustle of being in the great lights in the city and the, the, st the skyscraper and all of this kind of stuff. It all starts to mess with you. But it is in the place of barrenness that you learn how to appreciate life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm able to appreciate life because of what I went through. I'm able to appreciate every day for the days that I did not have. I'm able to appreciate everything that I have right now because I've been through the season of barrenness. Hallelujah. It represents the place of rejection and hopelessness. Re uh, Mephibosheth, if you will, I've got to hurry. Mephibosheth, if you will, finds himself in a place that he has been crippled since childhood. It is, uh, since, since childhood, he has been crippled and he has never known the pleasure of walking. He has never known the pleasure of running with other children. He has never known the pleasure of skipping and jumping through pastures. He has never known the experience of, 
of running and playing basketball. He has been crippled, glory to God, since he has been uh, 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 alive. He has been living in obscurity, forgotten and estranged, hallelujah, from his royal heritage. This boy did not even understand he was a, he was a prince. He did not even understand his royalty because his circumstances didn't line up with who he was. His circumstances, what he was going through, did not mirror the life of a prince. It did not mirror the life of someone, amen, who was rich and someone who was a landowner, someone who had great possessions. He was living in a place where he saw himself as unworthy and he even called himself a dead dog. Hallelujah. But what you need to understand is what you see of a person does not mean that's actually who they are. And I need to tell you, some of you all have gone through hell and high water. Some of you all have lived through the worst times of your life and you really still don't understand who God has made you. Hallelujah. Some of you still have not grasped who you really are. You still don't understand that we are a chosen people. I don't hear nobody here. Hallelujah. We are a royal nation. We are a peculiar people and the world tries to get us to fit into their mold and we sometimes try to fit into the mold of the world but we don't understand that there is royalty on the inside of us look at your neighbor and say neighbor there is royalty on the inside of you I need you to understand something here because I need to move quickly as I try to hurry up here uh, one of the things that we need to understand is in this place we a lot of times we'll talk about Mephibosheth and we'll talk about about the fact, hallelujah, that he was uh, re he was rejected and that he was forgotten, hallelujah. But the thing that you need to understand, hallelujah, is the fact that he was not only uh, forgotten and not only was he rejected, he was saved. Y'all, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, come on, y'all. He not only was rejected, he not only was in a hopeless situation, he not only grew up in a barren place, but out of of all of that he was saved hallelujah what do you mean bishop he was saved in spite of all of that he ain't dead he's saved y'all ain't saying nothing he's crippled he's not dead hallelujah in other words there's still something that he's got to accomplish and 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 the reason why he is in the situation that he is in is because God saved his life I, I, I wish I had somebody here this morning that would get excited about the fact fact that yes you went through yes you grew up in the situation you grew up yes you grew up the way you grew up yes you didn't have a whole lot of money yes we have a whole list of things that you can say yes to but at the end of the list you need to be able to say but God saved me <laughs> hallelujah and as a matter of fact the reason why I went through what I went through was because God saved me because if God had not saved me I would have been destroyed <laughs> if God had not saved me if I had not went through what I went through I don't hear nobody if I had not went through what I went through. If I had not survived what I had survived, I would have been dead a long time ago. Hallelujah. But God allowed, hallelujah, somebody to pick me up. I wish I feel like preaching here. Hallelujah. Every now and then God will send somebody your way that will pick you up. Hallelujah. And I need you to understand, sometimes God will send people to pick you up that ain't your family. Hallelujah. Sometimes your family may not be the ones to pick you up. And then for whatever reason, it can be for whatever reason it is. Hallelujah. But you need to understand sometimes your family ain't going to be the ones that pick you up. Sometimes your family ain't the ones that's going to carry you. Sometimes God will send a nobody. God will send a nurse. God will send somebody that will come to you and help you along your way and help you to make it. It is in this that uh, they were going through. Israel was going through siege and they were at war. And as they were leaving, remember, hallelujah, Mephibosheth. Fibosheth is a baby when this happens. He does not remember what happened to him. He does not remember the siege. He does not remember the war. Hallelujah. But there are, oh my God, there are some, look at your neighbor and say, there are folk that know stuff about you that you don't know. Yeah. 
Oh, y'all ain't, y'all don't y'all think I'm playing. Think I'm playing. Uh, Sister Donna, there are folk that know stuff about me that I don't know about me. Hallelujah. They can tell, yeah, huh, son, I remember such and such, and I remember this, and I remember that. And, uh, and sometimes all you need is to connect with folk that know where you come from. My God. See, the problem that we find is we are trying to get to our next, but we don't know where we started from. And if you don't know where you started from, you're going to get into the wrong direction. If you don't know where you started out from, you're going to end up in the wrong place because where you're going sometimes don't mean where you were supposed to come from. It was Mephibosheth that did not understand that he was a prince. Y'all ain't saying And they kept this from him. They did not want him, hallelujah, to sit and be discouraged and be messed up and be lost. So they didn't tell him who he was. Hallelujah. And because he did not know who he was, he was just grateful for life. Y'all ain't helping me. He was grateful every day that he was able to get up and he was able to look around. He wasn't able to walk, but he was able to just say, ooh, I'm thankful for another day. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you don't learn how to thank him in your broken place, if you don't know how to celebrate God when you don't have anything, if you don't learn how to praise God when the chips are down, you'll never be able to praise him when you get to the mountaintop. The valley is the place where you learn how to praise him. The valley of despair is the place where you learn that God is God and beside him there is isn't another. And because I've mastered, y'all ain't helping me. Some of y'all need to understand I've mastered the valley. Some of y'all have a PhD in valley experiences. Hallelujah. And because you have your degree in valley experiences, you're able to make it to the top. It is here now that Mephibosheth finds himself in a play where he is barren. He has lost hope. He has nothing thing and nobody has told him the story of how he got here. It is in this that Mephibosheth finds out that there was a war and when the nurse was carrying him, she dropped him. Y'all ain't helping me. She dropped him trying to get him to safety. Everybody else was killed. Everybody else was destroyed. But the little baby that had crippled legs, y'all ain't helping me. The little baby that was overlooked, the little baby that was taken, hallelujah, he was still alive. Look at your neighbor and say, I might be crippled, but I'm still alive. Come on, y'all. I might be crippled. I may, I may not be able to move like I want to move. I may be able to, not be able to go where I want to go. But the fact of the matter is I thank God for life. And not only do I thank God for life, but I thank God for who picked me up. It is this woman that raises him and teaches him and shows him that he is, hallelujah, appreciative of life. And, and he is able to look on him. But what he does not understand as most of us don't. Many of us really don't know our true identity. And I believe even as we are in this time in this world, the, the, the problem of the black man is he does not know who he really is. He does not understand that we've been stolen. We have been, uh, we've been taken away from our homeland. Uh, they do is fight one another. Y'all ain't helping me. Hallelujah. They wake up in the morning and say good morning. And what you saying good morning to me for? Pow! Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. They, all they do is fight and they set it up so that we will look at it and watch it. And they make money off of the fact, hallelujah, that we're sending stuff out. Only reason why you're a part of something like that is because you don't know your value. You don't know your worth. Y'all ain't helping me. You don't know your worth. That's why you let a no good joker, y'all ain't ain't going to like me, so I might as well go ahead and say it so y'all can get mad. You, When you know your value and you know your worth, you will refuse to allow someone, hallelujah, to just use you as a doorman. When you know your
your value and your worth. <laughs> you will say, I'd rather be by myself. Y'all ain't, help. I feel my help you now. Watch out. I'd rather be by myself <laughs> than to have a piece of a man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> that ain't nothing but breath and britches. <laughs> I'd rather be by myself <laughs> than to just have a worthless woman that's just hips, lips, and fingertips. Y'all ain't, I'd rather be by myself than to have somebody that ain't going to help me get to where I need to go. Yes, I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. It's time for you to make up in your mind you're greater than that. It's time for you to make up in your mind, hallelujah, that I need somebody that's going to walk with me. I need somebody that's going to help me to walk in my greatness. Hallelujah. Somebody touch your chest and say, I am greatness. Hallelujah. I've been born in obscurity. I've been living in the barren place. I've been living in the ghetto. Hallelujah. But I need you to understand. You sit, look at somebody and tell them. You're sitting next to royalty. You're sitting next to greatness. And I know my name is not in lights right now. But I still want you to know that I am somebody. I am somebody. I don't know why. I don't have no proof of it right now. I don't have the evidence of it right now. But I need somebody here to know that I am somebody. You got folk that'll look at you and say you think you're so much and why do you have a problem with me because you think you're all of that you think you're this and you think you're that and your response needs to be I may not have the evidence of it right now I may not have the money in my bank account right now I may not have any property right now but I just feel like I'm greater than this excuse me can I get out of here now. I said, excuse me, but there's something down on the inside of me that makes me to believe that I'm greater than what I'm going through. The only reason I haven't blown my brains out yet is because I believe that there's something down on the inside of me that's worth living for. I believe all the hell I'm going through is going to pay off after a while. I believe God help me to preach this thing here. I believe that God is getting ready to turn my situation around. That's why you got folk that's looking at you and they don't know how to take you. You keep coming to church and shouting. You keep coming to church and dancing. You keep coming to church and giving God the glory. But you're going home to a broken home. You're going home to stuff in your life that don't seem to be working. But you're still praising God. The car ain't working. The stove don't work. The microwave don't work. The TV is broken. But there's still a praise on the inside of you. Look at your neighbor and say everything in my life may be broken. But my praise is still working. Yes, my praise is still intact. And I got a reason to praise the Lord. I got to get out of here. David, he looks for somebody that he can be good he looks for somebody that he can be a blessing to. Hey, 
hey, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Grab hand with somebody <laughs> and prophesy to them <laughs> and tell them lift your head up. <laughs> Somebody's looking for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody's looking for you. <laughs> Somebody wants to be a blessing to you. <laughs> Somebody is seeking your name out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> say, where's that girl at? <laughs> She did some work for us last year. She did something for we can't find her. Somebody's looking for you. And everybody might be talking about you. Everybody might be casting you to the dogs. But there's somebody that's looking for you. That they can show kindness to you. There's somebody that's looking and has your name in their mouth. Somebody is looking and saying where are they at I remember I remember that grandmother y'all ain't helping me can I stop through here for a second and tell you it pays how you treat folk you may not see it in your life but your children might see it your grandchildren might see it look at your neighbor and say stop treating folk bad y'all ain't stop treating treating folk mean and hateful and evil because somebody will be good to you because you was good to them. Say yes, somebody. The Bible said that David tries to find somebody that he can be good to and he finds a man by the name of Ziba. Ziba comes in and says, Says David, there is yet one of the house of Saul. I didn't want to tell you about it because I didn't know how you were going to feel because I know all that Saul did to you. I know how he tried to destroy you and how he tried to kill you. So I didn't tell you about him. But Ziba said, there is one that is in Lodibar and he is the son of Jonathan. I want you to know there's always somebody that knows somebody. There's always somebody that can tell you. Y'all ain't y'all trying to act like I'm the only one. That got family members that know all the tea. They know all the dirt. They know everything you've done. They may not talk about it. They may not say nothing about it. Because we come from a different generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I come from a generation that they may know what you did. But they didn't put it on Facebook. They may have known what you did. But they didn't tell nobody. They may have known what you did. But they kept it to themselves. And that's who Ziba was. Ziba said, I remember that Jonathan had a son. Y'all talking about Jonathan was gay. Y'all talking about Jonathan and David was gay. I ain't never seen no two gay men have a son. Jonathan had a son. Hallelujah. That means he was with a woman. He had a son, and his name was Mephibosheth. He said, if we go down, I can take you where he is. Y'all ain't helping me. Now, if I was Mephibosheth, I might have an attitude, because I'd say, you left me down here all of these years. Man, I could have been in the big house a long time ago, but I I need somebody to know huh, that it's all in God's timing. Huh, it's all when God say, huh, if God don't open the door, huh, you can't make it through. Huh, and I come to tell you huh, that sometimes uh, God will leave you huh, in a barren place. Huh, God will leave you huh, in a broken place huh, because he's making you. Huh, look at your neighbor. Huh, and say, neighbor, out of all the hell you've been through, you survived it. He let you go through to be who you are. He 
and let you go through all of the pain to make you who you are. And I, I, I come to tell you that you wouldn't be who you are had you not gone through the tears at night. Yeah. Y'all ain't helping me. That's why we used to sing this song and say, I lay awake at night, but that's all right. I know Jesus. Y'all, I wish I had a Baptist trick here. I said, I know Jesus is going to fix it. After a while, every night that Mephibosheth went to bed, he looked up in the sky and he said I know that I'm called the greater but I know you gonna fix it yeah I hear Mephibosheth singing in his heart I don't know my God I don't know about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but one thing I know is I know who holds my hand anybody here know God is holding your hand you got sleepless nights but he's holding your hand you got tear stained pillars but he's holding your hand you're living with a doctor's report but he's holding your hand and you won't make it through say Y'all ain't helping. I got to get out of here. Let me tell you one thing. And we gonna shout. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, get your legs ready. Because we gonna dance. We gonna celebrate. But before we celebrate, I need to tell you, watch out for Zyba. Watch that joker. Y'all ain't helping me. Because Zyba is too faced it. Zyba is somebody you cannot trust. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Every now and then you got folk in your life that'll say good things about you. But be careful because just because they say good things today, they'll turn on you tomorrow. Y'all ain't helping me. Don't be crazy and don't be distracted when folk hail you today. Folk will hail you one day and send you to hell the next. So don't be confused about how folk will love you one day and you'll be the best thing next to sliced bread on Tuesday. But then on Thursday, they say, I can't stand them. That's who Ziba was. Ziba was the one who told David about Mephibosheth. He's the one that told him he's down there in Lodi Bar. I know where he is and let's go get him. But the same joker that told David where Mephibosheth was is the same joker that whispered in his ear and say, you know that Mephibosheth since you done brought him up here and you done brought him into the palace, you know he think he all of that now. I need y'all to understand. You need to know everybody that's in your circle. You need to know who is telling you to go ahead. You need to know the faces of the people that are in your life because everybody that pats you on the back ain't trying to encourage you. Some folk are patting you on the back to find the soft spot. Some folk are patting you on the back to find out where to put the knife. But I thank God that even though Ziba can turn his back on you, one thing about God is he never, he never turns his back. Somebody ought to be happy. You've had folk 
to turn their back on you. You've had folk to lie on you. You've had folk to disown you. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad Jesus never fails. Jesus never turned his back on me. Jesus never disowned me. He'll walk with me. He'll talk with me. He'll tell me I am his own. Say yes. I'm through. I'm through. But this is what he does. David goes and sends for Mephibosheth. When he sends for Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth is not able to walk. He's not able to bring himself. Isn't it something amazing how God, watch this, when God calls you, he does not, con- he's not concerned about the state that he finds you in. See, see, see God, see this reason why you got folk that don't like you. Because in the midst of the mess that you was in, God still called you. <laughs> Smoking crack, but he called you. Doing drugs, but he called you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But the one thing about it is that, and see, here's what you need to understand: that we get this thing mixed up and say, "A gifts and callings come without repentance." That's not, that doesn't mean that you can be uh, 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 you can be a sinner and just because you got uh, a gift to sing that you don't got to be saved. That's not what that means. And we've used that as an excuse for people to justify their behavior. Yeah, they might can preach. Yeah, they might can play. Yeah, they might can do this, that, and other. But they live a they live a raggedy life, and we we justify it. But you know, gifts and callings come without repentance. That ain't what that mean, honey. That the, the, the revelation of that scripture is hallelujah. That though hallelujah, if God calls you and He gives you a gift and He gives you a calling, He does not take that gift and that calling back just because you don't do what you're supposed to do. If that was the case, none of us would be in here right now if he took it back. If he took back the gift of salvation because we were in sin. If he took back the gift of holiness because we were in sin. No, he kept us and he did not repent that he gave it to us. He did not repent that he gave us his son Jesus. He did not repent that he gave us the anointing to preach. He did not give us, he did not take that back. It comes without repentance. He does not repent that he gave it to you. He calls him while he's crippled, can't walk. Isn't that something? You, you, you're, you're, at the, you're at the precipice of your next great move. But you're lame. You're on the brink of experiencing something great in your life. And folk don't know you're depressed out of your mind. Folk don't know what you go through. Don't know what you're dealing with. But he still called you. My God. He still sent for you. Knowing that he could not walk. He called him knowing the responsibility that was going to be required to take care of Mephibosheth because of the fact that he could not walk. He's going to have to have somebody to help him. Because he could not walk, there were some health issues. He's going to have to have a nurse. With all of the extra responsibility that came and sat at the table, it was the fact that there was a whole lot of other stuff that came along with it. God is the only one that's able to handle all your baggage. You get 
disappointed and you get sad because people are not able to handle all of your baggage and all of the stuff that you've been through. They're not supposed to be. And he said it in his word. He's, that's why he said, don't lean on the arms of flesh because the arms of flesh is going to fail you every time. Yeah. Elder Jackson, I found out that people have good intentions. They have good intentions. Sister Erica, but it, comes, it, it becomes too much of a weight. It becomes too much of a weight. And that's why he says, don't trust in man. Many of us, the problem that we've had is we put our faith in men. And when I say men, I mean mankind. We've put our faith in mankind and we trusted them. And so when they disappoint us, we lose hope. We feel defeated. Glory to God. But until you have learned how to live in a barren place, until you learned how to live with nothing, you'll never be able to appreciate having something. Watch this, and I'm through. He calls Mephibosheth, and he brings him to the house, brings him to the palace. When he brings him to the palace, Mephibosheth comes in, and he takes the position, watch this now, Mephibosheth takes the position that he had been in on the ground. Mephibosheth comes in and, and he says, put me down right here. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. He, he looks around. He says, Lord, I'm, I, you mean to tell me uh, this is where I'm getting ready to live? And he says, put me down. I, I, don't, I, I know how to make it on my own. But what Mephibosheth didn't understand was his, his days of making it on his own had come to an end. Wow. Let me prophesy to somebody here on this side that'll receive it. Your days of scrounging and scraping and make it and survive has come to an end. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're at the king's house now. Hallelujah. And you can't you can't be scrounging and scraping at the king's house. You you can't be begging and have your head down at the king's house. Y'all ain't saying when you when you come into the king's house, you got to understand, hallelujah, he's making you somebody great. And God has made choice of you. And he's decided to bring you from where you were to where he has you now. He sits him at the table and he says to him. Listen to me. There's a certain way that we act over here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So we don't. So we don't. We don't do things a certain way over here. I don't, I don't like. I can't get down through there. The poinsettias is beautiful, but I. I need to be able to get through. Thank God. Ain't that beautiful? Amen. David says, listen, son, there's a way that we act over here. And we don't beg over here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't ask folk for stuff over here because everything that you need has already been provided. <laughs> He says, but Spirit Chef, all you got to do is make your request known. <laughs> Who am I talking to here today? <laughs> Some of y'all around here begging and crying and pleading and getting on your knees in a time of prayer. You say, Lord, I need such a, such a. See, what you need to understand is when you come over into this way, your days of begging and scraping is over. You, he says, make your request made known unto me. And so, 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 so Mephibosheth says, all right, I got it. I understand. Okay, just let the servants know what I want. When I want something, they'll bring, he said, yeah. You want some, you want some cornbread? They'll bring it to you. And he said, really? And so he said, he had a little bell. He said, I'd like some cornbread, please. And they brought the cornbread to him. He said, wow. And he enjoyed all of that. 
He said, I'd like to have some, I'd like to have me some uh, Louis Vuitton uh, uh, suits and, and they let me have some stuff. And he, and he said, he called and the servants came and brought it. And he brought him all of this stuff. And, and Mephibosheth was sitting there and he was saying, man, this is all right. But he was still depressed. Can I tell y'all something? Things will not bring you out of depression. Things will not change the tears that come in your eyes. They won't change it. And many of us have thought that we could fix our lives with a new car. With a new house, a new man, a new woman. Yo, some of us thought we could fix our life with food. That's why I'm big as I am. Or food would fix it for me. Huh? Doesn't change anything. Out of all that he had and all that was brought to him, he still was in a bad place. It wasn't until his life changed. His life did not change until David said something powerful. David had a conversation with him and said, listen, son, I know you're crippled. I know you can't walk. He says, and honestly, I can't go back in time and I can't fix that. There's nothing I can do about that. That happened before my time. I didn't know you. Had I been here, I might have been able to do something for you. But I, but I didn't know you then. You were dropped. You were in this position because they were trying to get you to safety. And the nurse, with her good intentions, dropped you. And the way she dropped you, you became crippled. And therefore, you were stuck in Lodibar. He said, this is the reason why you can't walk. He says, though I can't take away your lameness, I can't take away the fact that you are crippled and you can't walk. He says, but what I can do, he says, what I can do, he says, I can, he says, I can, I can extend my table to you. And, and, Whenever you want to come and understand who you are, he said, I want you to come and I want you to sit at my table. He said, and when you sit at my table, you've had insecurity issues because you couldn't walk and you'd been deformed from the waist down. He says, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a place at my table for you continually that when you're at the table, they won't see your crippleness. When you, when you sit at the table, you won't be just like everybody else. <laughs> when you sit at the table, glory to God, I, not only are you going to sit at the table, Mephibosheth, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the table. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and the purpose, let me, let me help you all about this covering issue. The purpose of the covering is to fix, is to cover what you can't change. The covering is not to cover your sin. The covering is not to cover you so you can continue doing what you've been doing and, and, and keep getting up and acting like you saved and you're still doing all the stuff that you've been doing. That's not the purpose of the covering. The purpose of the covering is to cover up the brokenness that cannot be fixed. I need somebody to understand that God is so much God that he don't always have to fix you. He can leave you where you are so you'll remember where you came from. Lord have mercy. He's 
sitting here at the table. He's sitting at the table and everybody is looking and when they come in, they bow to him and say, your grace, your, your honor, your presence and they, and they don't know what's going on up on the table. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's some stuff going on under the table that you don't know nothing about. <laughs> but as long as you at the table, <laughs> my God, as long as you at the table, <laughs> everything is all right. <laughs> Come on here, sis. <laughs> as long as you at the table, <laughs> and I want to, y'all ain't helping me here. <laughs> I feel my help here today. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, <laughs> God <laughs> is about to do something <laughs> because I need you to understand <laughs> with all the stuff <laughs> that you've been going through, <laughs> all the stuff <laughs> that you got going on <laughs> in your life, <laughs> it's all right <laughs> because God <laughs> is bringing you. <laughs> Sit down, girl. <laughs> Sit down at the table. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> and Y'all see her, don't you? <laughs> but you don't see <laughs> what's under the table. <laughs> you don't see what she been through. <laughs> she, Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> you don't see her brokenness. <laughs> All you see <laughs> is a whole woman. <laughs> All you see <laughs> is somebody <laughs> that God restored. <laughs> All you see is something. I need everybody that got a family member that you need to be at the table. I need you to celebrate who God is and celebrate what God did. Because if God can bring her to the table, if God can sit her at the table, he can save your family. 